I don't know what God has used a little youth band from a church in the outer suburbs of Sydney, but for some reason, he's given us this opportunity. When I started a church, I wanted to have a church that wrote songs that influenced the way people worship. There was this underground movement. We'd do these events, and there'd be thousands turning up. In the end, our success is not about us. It's ultimately about God. When you take him out of the equation, you've got nothing. When did you first hear about Hillsong? Uh, I had never heard of them until the project came uh, around. Uh, a good friend of mine called me up, a colleague named Andrew Freed, um, who is the person who connected me with the producers of the film. And he, uh, he's like, I got a music film. I'm like, you're talking to the right guy, here we go. He's like an enormous band, you know, sold millions of albums, selling out, the, you know, this place, that place. I'm like, oh, I must know who this is. You know, I know who the obscure bands are. Yeah. I definitely know who this is. And he says, Hillsong. And I'm like, no idea who that is. <laughs> and then he goes, it's a Christian band. And I, my initial reaction was, why would I make a Christian film? Um, and uh, I was raised um, Catholic, Irish Catholic, and was an altar boy, went to Catholic high school. And as soon as I was old enough to tell my parents, I'm not doing this anymore, I did. And hadn't thought about it in 20 years. And it's funny because you could, you know, on that phone, Andrew could have said to me, this movie's about ISIS. This movie's about, uh, you know, just like Satan worshipers. I would have been like, cool, like that sounds edgy and neat. And it's like the one word that you could have said that would have maybe been like, I don't know, would have been uh, Jesus. And then I realized, I was like, you actually have a prejudice, you know, a prejudice that you need to sort of get beyond if you're actually an open-minded person, yeah. um, which I like to believe I am. And so I decided to put my own baggage away and just open up my mind and just let it see what happens. And then you meet Brian, you meet Joel, um, and you realize that these are very sincere, very real people. So one of the goals was to create an experience yeah. or an emotional reaction. Yeah. And how did you try to fulfill that? Um, well, they do a lot of the work, honestly. Yeah. You know, like that's, this is their thing. And, and my job as a documentarian is to um, digest a culture and then represent it without getting in the way. Mm -hmm. And so um, for, for me, I was just really trying to get out of the way and let them do what they do. Um, and so they take it from there. Okay, when they came to you and said, we're gonna do a movie, what were you guys thinking? Why? Well, why would you do that? <laughs> There's and nothing like, to show, right? <laughs> like, it's just joke. us being us. We just kind of laughed because we didn't really believe it. Yeah, th but. there was a day that we, we were gonna meet the producers and the director. And I, I legitimately thought, okay, when they meet us, they're gonna be like, ah, oh, okay, no, we're not gonna do this anymore. <laughs> but but it, that's not what happened. And um, I think what came out is is um, something that will encourage people, I think. Yeah, say like someone who is a non-Christian came to the film, what would you hope that they saw from it? I, I hope that, you know, I hope that they would see the church, as in the church, not just our church, but the church, as a place that, you know, could be, could be a home for them. It, it could be a place that they could go to f feel safe, to be encouraged, to actually find hope for their own life. Maybe be encouraged that that no matter how ordinary you feel, you can do something significant with the life that you have. Now, how do um, this may be kind of an intense question, but how do both of you feel like your testimonies have brought you here? I just remember getting a picture, as you know, um, you know, in my early teens of this passage in Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, that like the way he was called wasn't this like because he was the most super talented, best looking, had it all together. It was just more this heart that like, here I am, I'll do whatever you want, God. It's that whole, and it's the message that God's looking for your availability, not just your ability. And that's good news for all of us because I think, you know, whether we admit it or not, we all have certain insecurities and that's kind of what I think the great message of hope for this, of this movie is, is that you know what, God's not looking for everyone, anyone that has it all together, because newsflash, no, none of us really have it together. We pretend that we do. Yep. God's just looking for a heart that says, hey, here I am, I want to follow you. And what God can do with that is, you know, there's no limit. And so we're excited. And that's been, I think, all the message of, sorry, all the, the journey of Hillsong United and our church as individuals and together that we've just kind of come to the table and go, mm -hmm. God, you know, we're not that good. We don't have the best voices. We don't have it all together, but we're passionate about you and want to help people. 
and that's what we believe that God has for every single person. Well, that's a great message, especially for youth, because in an age where people are conflicted with identity, um, trying to find their identity and insecurity, I mean, that's a wonderful message to impart that like God gives you that confidence. I mean, ho the, right now in the world, I would say there's a lot of hopelessness. There's a lot of, there's a feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. and I. I love that that we can be a part of something that perhaps brings that message of hope that can en that encourages people that maybe um, would would kind of say, hey, you know, like there is hope, there is hope in this life, and and there is a there is something for there is something for you to do with your life that is significant. Does everything make sense? Absolutely not. But I think more stuff doesn't make sense without him. In January of 2014, my wife Joey and I decided to take a year off. We believed that God would give us a great story. And he did.